Eid al-Ghadir is an event that all Muslims should be celebrating. If truly the Prophet appointed Imam Ali as a successor, then why did the people not follow him? There has never been a case where either a prophet or a successor or a prophet has ever been chosen by people. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to this fourth episode of this special series about Eid al-Ghadir. In the previous three episodes, we discussed about the concept of council or shura or voting system. And we said that was there any example, any example from before the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, with the previous prophets in the Quran that were mentioned where a prophet himself was chosen by a council or a successor of a prophet was chosen by council, like for example in the case of Musa and his brother Harun when he appointed him, or when Musa chose some people to go with him to Mount Sinai, did he also leave it for a council, or in the case of Talut and Jalut when the appointment of Talut was made to fight and lead the battle against Jalut, was it also by council? Never. We never see an example before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, when it comes to imama, divine leadership, or even a military commandership where people choose by convention or by a council. Every time the Quran tells us it was an appointment. And then we looked at the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the seerah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, when he started preaching about his message. We never ever see an example of him leaving the issue of choosing a successor that is after him in Medina while he is gone to the people, nor does he ever leave it the case of leading commandership of an army to council or to leadership. And then we looked at the concept of shura in the Quran and we said that this concept does not apply to imama, to divine leadership. Now, that we've reached to this stage, I hope it is convincing enough to state that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam did not leave this ummah without appointing someone to lead it. In fact, we even said that after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, there was not a single example where a person came to the Khilafah through a council except Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi Whereas everything else, and we discussed it in the past, you can refer to these previous episodes to look at that. So this leads us with one final possibility. Did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam appoint someone? And the answer is yes. Who did he appoint? Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi. When did this happen? On the day of Eid al-Ghadir. Was this something that came out of the ordinary? Or was it something that was expected and anticipated? This is where we will concentrate on this episode and the next episode. We want to basically raise the argument when on the day of Ghadir, the Prophet وسلم, said to the Muslims that after I leave this dunya, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi, will be the master of the Muslims, the commander of the Muslims after me. When that happened, was it something out of the ordinary? or something that was highly anticipated and expected and people were just basically saying it's obvious it was Ali ibn Abi Talib. I will talk about the day of Ghadir inshallah in after the next episode inshallah that's when we're going to talk about the day itself the ahadith itself but what we want to build the argument right now is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi prepared the Muslims for Ali ibn Abi Talib's leadership sallallahu alayhi We will take a look today at four examples from the Quran. 
And next episode, insha'Allah, we will take a look at examples from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in which we will see that the Prophet prepared the Muslims for the Khilafah of Amir al Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi The examples, the four examples from the Quran we will look at are first and foremost, the time when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wanted to migrate from Mecca to Medina. When that event wanted to take place and happen, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa approached Amir al Mu'mineen sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi and told him, Ya Ali, I will be leaving to Medina. I would like you to sleep in my bed and cover yourself so that the mushrikeen who are plotting to kill me, assassinate me, when they look at someone sleeping, they would think this is me and then I would leave. Would you accept to do that, Ya Ali? Amir al Mu'mineen Salamullah Ali said, Ya Rasulullah, if I do it, would you be saved? He said, Yes, Ya Ali, inshallah, I will be saved. He said, Then may I be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. And Amir al Mu'mineen Salamullah Ali sleeps in the Prophet's bed, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaves and migrates to Medina. The Prophet tells Amir al Mu'mineen, Salamullah Alayh, I will wait for you on the outskirts of Medina. I will not enter Medina until you join me. So once I am leaving and I'm safe, then you follow me and we'll enter Medina together. Amir al Mu'mineen, Salamullah Alayh, sleeps in the Prophet's bed, and this is unanimously agreed upon historians where Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was the first man to sacrifice his life in Islam. He was willing to offer his life in sacrifice for Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. What happens then? An ayah was revealed to Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ayah number 207 from Surah Al Baqarah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يشري نفسه ابتغاء مرضات الله والله رؤوف بالعباد and among people is he the one who sells himself seeking the pleasure of Allah and Allah is all compassionate with his servants with the servants so this ayah was revealed about Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi, sleeping in the Prophet's bed, which the ayah says that he, Ali ibn Abi Talib, sells himself, he's sacrificing himself for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the first ayah that was revealed, or let's say the first ayah of the series we are discussing. And then after the Prophet was saved, Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi joined Rasulullah in Quba, the first masjid that was built in Islam, and they both entered Medina together. That's the first example we have from the Holy Quran, and this ayah and this story is mentioned by several, several mufassireen, including a Tha'labi. Tha'labi also mentions this tafsir that the ayah was revealed about Ali ibn Abi Talib. It's, worth, it's not worthy at this stage to mention that when Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan became the Khalifa of the Muslims, he paid Samara ibn Jundub 400,000 dirhams, 400,000 dirhams to go on the pulpit on the member and say that this ayah was revealed about Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam, the one who killed Ali ibn Abi Talib in Masjid al Kufa. There you see how the distortions of Bani Umayyah spread about the Quran amongst the people, how much they used to pay people to distort the tafsir of the Quran, the interpretation of the Quran. And that is why it is really mandatory for us in order to understand the Quran that we resort to Ahlul Bayt السلام, to the Prophet's family who are Ahlul Dhikr from whom we can learn about the Quran. And we will learn about that inshallah in our last episode. So that is something important for us to learn. That is the first of the four verses that we will be talking about. The second ayah we will discuss is Ayat At-Tathir. 
Ayat al-Tathir is ayah number 33 of Surah Al-Ahzab, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the latter part of the ayah, innama yuridu Allah liyudhiba ankum ar-rijis ahl al-bayt wa yutahhirakum tathira. Indeed, surely Allah wants to remove all impurities away from you, Ahl al-Bayt, and purify you a thorough purification. Aghrazi in his tafsir and many mufassireen, they say the Prophet took his abaya and he put Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, and Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullahi alayhi majma'een, under it. He kind of wrapped them with his abaya, with, with himself being with them. And he said, Oh Allah, these are my family. Those people are Ahlul Bayti, my Ahlul Bayt. So, O oh Allah, remove all impurities away from them and purify them a thorough purification. And so this ayah was revealed. So this means that Ahlul Bayt, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Salamullahi Alayh, has been purified from all impurities which means he does not sin. This is the concept of infallibility. And this is mentioned. Yani I ask all my dear viewers to really contemplate on this concept of removing any impurity. When Allah says, I want to purify you. I'm purifying you. A thorough purification. Tathira. And when he says, I want to remove all impurity. What kind of impurity is here? What do these mean? It means basically they don't cheat. They don't lie. They don't sin. All these things are considered impurities, and therefore they are perfect, including Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And Ar-Razi in his tafsir says, the interpreters of the Quran are unanimous in their agreement on this reason for the revelation of the ayah. So we say that it's quite interesting. When this ayah was revealed, for six months, the Prophet ﷺ would walk by the house of Fatima to Zahra and Amir al Mu'minin and would recite this ayah for six months. What is he trying to tell the Muslims? This is the man who will be leading the Muslims after me. He's trying to prepare the nation, the Muslims. Three, we will turn to Ayat Al Mubahala, which is Ayah number 61 of Surat Ali Imran. A group of Christians from Najran came to discuss with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa about Islam. They started getting into some arguments with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa They started talking to him. At the end, they told Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa you know what, we are still not convinced that your religion is indeed the truth. The Prophet Sallallahu at that stage said, okay, if you are not convinced, I invite you for a mubahala. What's a mubahala? A mubahala is basically, we both pray. You pray with your people and I will bring some people with me and we'll pray together. And we will ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to accept from the truthful one and curse the liars immediately they will all be destroyed and annihilated do you accept this invitation this mubahala initially they said yes we'll take it so they left then their master the master of the christians a man by the name of al-aqib al-aqib told his people his followers listen guys we know from talking to this man that indeed he is a messenger of god the way he speaks the way he talks the evidence that he brings forth there is no doubt in my mind that he is indeed the truthful messenger of Allah that has been promised in the scriptures. However, now that we've reached the stage of mubahala, of this kind of invocation, let's do it if the Prophet, if this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi brings his companions, we will do it because it means then he is not really sure whether or not he will win. So he's willing to sacrifice companions. However, if he brings his family members, then we will not do it because it means he's so sure. The next day they all get out and they start looking at who will be the Prophet ﷺ bringing with him. The Prophet ﷺ comes according to unanimous agreement by the majority of historians and mufassireen who said the Prophet came, he was holding an Imam al Hassan in his hand, Al Imam al Hussein on his chest, on his hands, 
and he was carrying him. Fatima to Zahra was walking behind him. Salam Allah alayha and Amir al Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib behind her. They came and the Prophet told them, When I do dua, when I pray, you say Ameen. Ta'meen. They said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. They came to do the invocation. Al Aqib, the leader of the Christian delegation from Najran, he said, I am seeing faces so bright and shiny, like stars, like moon in the sky. If they ask Allah to remove this mountain from its place, he would do it. So they said, What should we do, our master, our leader? He said, Forget it, we will not do Mubahala. This man recognized the greatness of Ahlul Bayt السلام, just by looking at them. Al-Razi, Al-Zakhshari, many scholars say this indeed shows the greatness of Ahlul Bayt السلام. And the ayah says, if you are in doubt of what I am talking about, ayah number 61 of Surah Ali Imran, then let us invite our children and your children. What children did the Prophet bring with him, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi? Hassan and Hussein. Our women and your women, what women did he bring with him? Only Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Ourselves and yourselves. Who did he bring with him as ourselves? Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And that is why Ibn Kathir in his tafsir narrates a hadith from Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari radwanullahi ta'ala alayh where he says ourselves is includes the Prophet sallallahu and Ali ibn Abi Talib which means the essence the self of Amir al mumini Ali Talib is that of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa their essence is one whatever applies to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa applies to Ali except that Ali Ali, Ali salam is not a prophet and I'll come to that inshallah in the next episode so that is three the last ayah we'll discuss is ayah number 55 of Surah Al-Ma'idah Surah number five where Abu Dhar al-Ghafari radhwanullahi ta'ala alayh says that I saw Ali ibn Abi Talib in the masjid of the Prophet. A poor man came and he asked people to help him. Nobody helped him. So he said to Allah, Ya Allah, here I am in the masjid in the mosque of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayh, asking people to help me and no one is helping me. Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam was in the state of ruku at that moment he extends his hand and he had a finger on his pinky, he had a ring on his pinky finger right here, the small one. And he signaled to this poor man to come and pick up the finger. So the man came, picked up the, the ring from uh, his finger, sorry, and he took it as a charity. So Amir al Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib gave charity, sadaqa, while he, or zakat, while he was in the state of ruku'. And that was why the ayah came to say, Indeed, your masters, innama waliyukum wilaya. Who are your masters? Allah. Who else? وَرَسُولُهُ and the messenger Rasulullah sallallahu who else وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and those believers all the believers no الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ those who establish salat and give zakat while they are in the state of ruku' al-allama al-zamakhshari has beautiful explanation of this ayah being revealed about Ali ibn Abi Talib and proving that indeed it is all about Ali ibn Abi Talib so here in this first ayah, last ayah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi teaches us, is trying to tell us, the Quran is trying to tell us that Ali is your master, is your leader. When the Muslims became aware of all these verses in the Quran being revealed about Ali ibn Abi Talib, it was no surprise for them that on the day of Ghadir, indeed Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi is the one who should succeed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He is the man who from his young age sells himself, sacrifices himself for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the man who's been purified. It means he is clean from any mistakes, any sins. He is perfect. He is the man who is the self and the essence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He is the man who is the master of the Muslims after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So then my dear brothers and sisters, the question is, why is it that we will not accept these facts? This is Quran. These interpreters in the Quran are most of them not from the school thought of Ahlul Bayt. Al-Razi, Al-Zamakhshari, Ibn Kathir, in some cases, Al-Dugr al-Manthur al-Siyuti. Let us 
really examine these verses which truly indicate that the Imam after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is indeed Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi as chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the next episode, we will discuss the traditions and the sunnah of Rasulullah with regards to this issue. Until I see you then, may Allah bless you. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlul Bayt TV, the holy household for every household.